Hello and welcome to Shivo versus the First World. I'm Sheila D. And I am Evo Terra. You're listening to our podcast about the reverse culture shock we've experienced every day since returning to America after three and a half years living overseas. Evo and I have been making this podcast for four years, across five seasons. Today, we're doing something we haven't done in some 150 episodes. We're going to talk about religion. Specifically, we're going to discuss the optics of religion in society, both here in the West and what we experienced in a few developing nations. So we're going to try to do our best to not offend any one particular religion. Wish us luck. But before Sheila and I switch to talk to each other mode, I'm going to again appeal to your good nature. I want you to take out your phone right now as I'm talking to you and take a screenshot of whatever you're using to listen to this episode of our show. That's it. One screenshot. You're done for now. Later, when you're cleaning up your messy photo stream and you come across that screenshot you just took, share it. Twitter, Instagram, Weibo. Make a post with that photo. Tag it with Shivo, if you like. That's it. I'll come back and remind you at the end of the show. Now, on to our comparative religion study. Kidding. It won't be anything resembling academic. Just a discussion. Right after this important message from our sponsor. And once again, we have no uh, sponsor, but again, all the cool kids say that. Honey, uh, I want to give a rundown of why we feel qualified to talk about this based on our experiences overseas and what we saw. So can you play fact checker for okay. me? Because yeah. I have some thoughts about mm-hmm. this. Okay. So the first bit of our tour back in 2015, was mostly in Europe. Well, actually only in Europe for the first bit. Right. right? Went to Europe. Now, Europe's history with religion is deep and long and, you know, crusade-like. <laughs> you could say. <laughs> There's a lot of that one. But in general, if when I think about the way that religion impacts society as a whole mm-hmm. for Europe, for each individual country, and in many cases, each autonomous region that we went to, For me, it was very much tied into the country itself. Right. There was was country-specific religion, Mm -hmm. but instead of it being something that people did every single day, it seemed to be more tied into the history. Mm -hmm. It's as, you know, the history of England, for example, is uniquely tied to the fight of Catholicism and Protestantism. Yeah, I would agree with that. Which I didn't pronounce properly, but I can't pronounce (laughs) Protestantism. Too much. Catholics and Protestants, right? right. Because the, the, the C of E, the Church of England, a, a lot of that's ro- ro- wrapped up into their history. Yes. Same thing through Spain. Catholic Church. Yep. All the way through. It, it, uh, we saw a lot of churches and a lot of uh, cemeteries. Exactly. And that's my second part of it. You know, for there, it's very much a let's conserve the past. Right. And remember our past. Yes. And, re- and the role that religion played in that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Lots of very old Anglican churches that aren't really utilized anymore. Some right. are, but they're infrequently. And for everybody there, it's like, yes, this is where we came from. Mm-hmm. This is mm-hmm. our history. It's what makes our state, our country, that which it is. Right. Seems about right. Yes. I, I think so. Yeah. I would agree with that. And so similarly in Southeast Asia and also Eastern Asia, because mm-hmm. we spent a lot of time in Thailand, right. clearly, and they also have traveled through Vietnam and Korea and Japan and all the Southeast Asian nations mm-hmm. except for two. So we've been through there. There, religion is also deeply tied into the society, but it's less about the country's religion and right. more about the culture. Right. Right. Which which is tied up in being that, that country. I mean, there, yep. there is certainly a certain amount of nationalism that prevails, but it's like this culture in Southeast Asia of their religion is more, or I don't know if it's more, but it seems like it it, it crosses borders more yeah, easily. Yeah, I, I think a great example was uh, Indonesia. Okay. Um, Indonesia has 
so many different islands and each island has, I think, an official uh, religion. I don't think it's official, official? but it certainly has a, a majority, majority population. Right. But they all play well together. Like mm-hmm. they're, Bali is basically Hindu, but you see all kinds of different Buddhism and different things mm-hmm. like that. And then Lombok was the one that had, um, it. I think was Catholic. Roman Catholic, yes. But the Muslim culture was very heavily influenced right because indonesia yeah. is right. a is a majority muslim country overall right. even though it's made up of these thirteen thousand islands around there yeah. but you know but again out of state level right out of, out of country level to me it seemed like the predominant religions which is mostly buddhism mm-hmm. there are plenty of muslim as well yeah or islamic hindu. there's hindu as well right but that seems to be much more tied into the but- history of the people that are there now and and tying their roots back to other other countries, countries other places, right. other areas, less countries, but more other areas of, yep. of the world ties together. And where in Europe, it's more, in my opinion, about conserving and remembering yep. in Southeast Asia, it's much more a, well, we are this religion because it's what we are obliged to be. To do, and yeah. in many cases, it's true conversion. I mean, right. we can remember when my family was converted to this religion, right. which never happens before. Go think, think Siam Reap. Yes. Siam Reap. Oh, the, yeah. Those temples there that it went back from, are they Hindu? Are they Islam? Are they Hindu? They went back and forth. And, are they Buddhist? You know, they went back and forth on what they're supposed to be. And they took out the heads of the- Knocked the, all the heads of the Buddhas off right. because that was idolatry. And so it's, yep. it is like this happened. Yep. This is our history. It's the old place, but we have since been converted to this and now we are obliged yep. to be this- religion. Yeah, I think that's true. I think that's true. And the other area we spent a significant amount of time in was Australia. And I don't remember anything religious there. We were there for two months. Month. Now, the people that we were staying with were staunchly non-religious as well. Right. But yeah, I don't remember. I mean, was there religion there? I'm sure there was. I think when we did a tour in Sydney, I yeah. think we saw a church, but just from the outside. I don't remember anything else. And that leads me to my next point, the perceived religiosity of a country. Okay. So do you think, honey, when we were in Southeast Asia, Mm -hmm. when we were in Bangkok specifically, versus where we live here in Phoenix, which area, which city Mm -hmm. had more churches or their in their watts in Thailand. More oh. watts or more churches per square kilometer, whatever you want to do. Right. Where was the density higher between here? Oh gosh, I would definitely say Thailand. And I wonder if that's true. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I maybe we saw them because that it was so different than anything else that we had grown up with that okay. we were seeking them out. Could be. You know. And and not just seeking them out. But uh, what do all Watts have in common in Thailand? Would you miss driving by a Watt? Oh, gosh, no. They're, Why would you not gold, miss that? Gold spires, different things like that. that there there say, is a certain type of architecture that not only says this is a Watt. Right. But it screams it like a disco ball. Right. It is just in your face. You can't yeah. miss it. So we could stand on our patio and I could count about 12 different Watts, watts. within view from our yep. 30th, 40th floor we were on, to how many are around us. Some big, yeah. some small, but you're not going to walk by and say, oh, I didn't realize that I just walked by a Watt. There might be one around the corner that you didn't realize existed, but right. you will not miss it. Exactly. Here in America, churches hide. They do. Um, I don't think they used to, though. I well, think they used to have a, you know, the big cross outside and things like that, but I think that they've become a little more... That, like you'll see them in strip malls and old converted houses and things like that. Is so, that 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 kind of what where you were going with that? Because that, that's, that's what I was. That's where you can go with it, and that's okay. fine, right? I mean, they're now taking opportunistic chances to right. be in various places. I think also there's less of a church architecture and mm-hmm. more of a things need to fit in this right. neighborhood. Right. We have planning departments, we have zoning departments who say True. no, you can't have signs going more than this. Your roofs can be no taller than this. These right. are the palettes and the colors that you're supposed to be utilizing. These are the materials you have to do. Right. So they hide. I did a map study. I went to Google Maps and I really? typed in what wait, on- Wait, I want to point out something. Yes. You did research. I did. I went to Google. 
on maps and I typed in what when and it was centered on our place in Bangkok uh-huh. and I kind of quickly got to get I just I didn't count them but you know right. just more of an eyeball that's how that's how dense they are okay as in density not, right not stupid we're not saying that moving on we I did the same thing for Phoenix I zoomed out the exact uh-huh. same area and typed in church okay looks exactly the same the distribution and the number of little red dots that I get seem to be about I, the I same. can see that um, just from our driving around and things like that. I knowing the the little area that we're in, mm-hmm. I can see where there's probably twelve churches within you know a five, five probably five mile yeah. radius. Yeah, and I think if you go back into Europe, mm-hmm. I think it'll be a similar distribution, mm-hmm. but many of them probably aren't utilized the way they were. Again, it's back right. about the history, right? It's more about, yes, this is an old cemetery. We're not digging these people up. And there happens to be a church that goes right. alongside it. It seems to be, to me, I think it feels roughly the same. Yeah. And in uh, what I didn't do, though, is I didn't go to London. Mm-hmm. I didn't you know, zoom in on Berlin or other places like this and find out what their density is like. But I have a funny feeling it's the same. Same. That it just kind of just kind of hides. hides. It hides from us. Mm. But there's two ways when it really can't hide. Okay. One is the holiday aspect oh and yeah now that's weird living in another foreign country where well talk about for a moment honey the uh, your, your experience with holidays in thailand so we have quite a few holidays throughout that are buddhist holidays and um we would get the day off of work and things like that as you normally would for a holiday mm-hmm. but there is no drinking right none yep and so from like midnight to midnight Restaurants can't serve, stores can't serve alcohol, none of that. And that's really weird because like for us, like we're like, oh yeah, we, we're we drinking. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Merry Christmas. So, Open my beer. Right. Yeah. Um, did I miss anything on that? Because I, I think that kind of covered it. I mean, we had ceremonies at the school. I don't know what a, a true business you know, environment, do they do ceremonies on site for employees. I, oh, I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't believe that so. they do because in in Thailand, going to the Wat is very much a thing that everybody does. Right, and they all have their little Buddha shelving unit. But I don't believe ceremonies really take place there. Right. Not for the not for the holidays. I mean, right. the, the ceremony there is let's put the red Fanta, the oranges, <laughs> and the incense. We got to make sure that's all, fresh every all day. All in the gold bowl. That's got to be fresh every day. But right. I don't think there's anything special on holidays. Okay. I think the, the holiday thing for me that and, and you when you were there, uh-huh. you were teaching in a Catholic school. Yes. So you got the benefit of having all the Christian holidays uh-huh. and all the Buddhist holidays. I know. It was great. That was pretty fantastic. I think we had off once a month except for, well, July and August. And ne- actually, no, we had August too. But July, we didn't initially until king passed away mm. and then we had the new king come right. in but that's not religion right well so. it kind of is religion i mean that's what right. this whole quasi it's it's not really a theocracy but it kind of is because mm. their religion is so interwoven exactly you know how many religious holidays do we get off in america uh we get two christmas and easter bingo but easter is usually on a Sunday, so you don't always get off. But sometimes you'll get off a uh, Good Friday. Some, but not everywhere. Right. You're right. So you're right. Since Easter's on a Sunday, yeah, most people don't get Easter off. I mean, the only, is it true that the only religious holiday, and then we may be wrong about this because holidays have snuck up on us again back in America. We yeah. forgot things like Labor Day. And and I actually have to write about them. So <laughs> well, I've got that. I've got some listed out that I had to had have to do for work. So I think um, it's I think it's only Christmas. I think so um, because uh, MLK is a person. Yeah. Then we have President's Day. Non-religious. March and April would be Easter. But that's May. on a Sunday. It's Easter Sunday. Right. You may or may not get Good Friday off, right? Right. And then May is um, Arbor Day. No. Not uh, religion. That is Memorial Day. Also not religious. And then we have July, 4th of July, not religious. Not religious. religious. Nothing in August, but then we have September, which Labor is Day. Labor Day. Not religious. Uh, October is- Halloween, uh, quasi- But you don't get the day off. You don't get the day off work anyhow. Even, no, sorry, Wiccans. Which, by the way, we should. Because Wiccans, I, I know you want it Halloween. off. I know you want it off. You're not going to get it off. And then November is- Thanksgiving, uh, which 
isn't and necessarily – Yes, right, Veterans Day. But Thanksgiving isn't really – it's 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 an American holiday. Right. Thanking for thanking us for not you know dying quickly enough, but yeah. I mean that's quasi religious in nature, but it's not really right. religious about giving thanks. But it wasn't to you know it's not like we're celebrating the feast yeah. that God basically jumped in front of us. It was no we, Indians decided to try right. To, yeah, I think it's only one, but in Thailand, I don't know, it's fifty. Some, it's not it's a, fifty. It's a very large number. Um, it, it's mostly it's there's several Buddhist holidays, but then there's also the the Mother's Day and Father's Day, and we get those days off. Right. But again, not religious. Right. We're talking right. about religion on this and, show. And those days are related to the king's and queen's Which is birthday. not really religious, even though right. uh, most right. of the we're not going to get into that. So anyway. Yes, I agree yeah. with that. So to me, that's one is the holidays. Mm -hmm. But I think the big factor and perhaps mm -hmm. the problem and that which I'm going to be most critical about is the proselytizing. Yes. While we traveled... I'm going to mm -hmm. ask you this question. Okay. At any time for the 20-ish countries we visited, mm -hmm. three different continents we were on, with the exception of the country we currently find ourselves in now, mm -hmm. America, did you ever see a street preacher? Did you ever see someone come to your door and offer salvation in whatever form? to you no um the only thing you see is what, in, what did you see specifically you see in thailand you see the monks walking around and they will you know they'll pray for whoever wants them to it's not but they don't come like, up to you they would never come up to me it's always you know somebody is asking them to do that but it's out on the street so that's the only way you really see it. So what you're talking about is when the monks leave their wat early mm -hmm. in the morning and walk around the town to get the food that they need to survive basically for the day. Right. Typically, they yep. will go out in the morning. They will get their gifts yep. from people and good good Buddhist Thai people will sit there and give them rice and give them food right. and give them things that they take back. They're alms bowls that are made for them. Take that back into the wat. Yes. And occasionally you will see a monk just walking around because it's two o'clock on a Wednesday. Right. Who knows what that is? They have to, they have lives as we have lives. Right. There are the equivalents of nuns, whatever. The, I think they're acolytes or the neophytes, whether they're in the white. Yeah. Typically the women. I'm not sure. We're going to call them nuns. It's not okay. the right, the right terminology. Sure. So you would see them much like mm -hmm. you would, you might see a priest or a nun yep. walking around anywhere else. You would see them. But to the question of proselytizing, they don't. It only happened to me once. Really? And you remember when this was, we were in. Soul, and the Jehovah's Witnesses came to the door. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We were in the Airbnb. That's right. In a very much Korean neighborhood. Oh, very Korean. Just like everywhere else in Seoul, right. mostly. This was not expat central. No, definitely not. This was a lovely little small one bedroom, one kind of an efficiency a studio, studio yeah. condo. I think it was three floors, maybe. Yeah. Smallish and. One day we were sitting there preparing to go out and then knock on the door, which I assumed was the landlord, oh, yeah. popped the door open. And these two older Korean women yes, dressed in what you would expect June Cleaver to be wearing right, are at the door looking at me with gigantic eyes because they didn't expect a white guy <laughs> to open Hopefully the door. Hopefully you had a shirt on. Probably did. Okay. <laughs> Maybe that's why they were wide-eyed if you didn't. I probably <laughs> did. And I remember them just stumbling for a bit. And then one of them said, oh, wait, that's right. I do speak English. Perhaps this large <laughs> hairy man in front of me also speaks English. I shall now attempt with the English. And she just simply gets out the words, we are Christian, and oh. hands me a little pamphlet. And I said, good for you, and closed the door. <laughs> nice. That was it. Okay. Nowhere else abroad did I see street preaching, did I right. see somebody on the corner screaming with a microphone, nor did I see somebody on the streets yelling and screaming to save your immortal soul. True. Which you forget how prevalent that is here until it happens again. Yeah, we had that happen recently. We went out to First Friday. So that's the the art walk here in downtown Phoenix that happens the first Friday of every month. And on, I think if I remember correctly, at least three different areas, there was 
massive people out mm -hmm. yelling through a microphone, yep. wanting to save our souls. Yes. Yes. Very, very loud. Very, very vocal. Yeah. Even when they're not loud and vocal. Yesterday, mm -hmm. shopping, when we went to the Asian market, because we have totally become assimilated to our yes. lives over, at least my cooking has become assimilated. Yes. Go to the Asian market. The Jehovah's Witnesses were there. Is that what that table was? Yep. Oh, okay. I didn't yes. even pay attention to it. So. Yes, they were there to save the souls of the shoppers. That, and I can't speak all the time, but based on our experiences, that garbage never happened when we were overseas. Yeah. That appears to be a uniquely American thing. Now, again, I could be wrong. And it seems like yeah. it's, it's spreading. The people who were, remember those ladies that I just mentioned in Korea, uh -huh. they weren't there telling me the story of whatever religion is probably like maybe uh -huh. buddhism in, in korea since it right. does have asian history that wasn't it nope okay. it was the proselytizing christians and i'm not necessarily rap you know banging on christians i am bringing on proselytizing right and by and large there are a certain number of religions that proselytize that you forget when you're not in a country that is predominant by those right. proselytizing again I, I would be interested in how often the proselytizing brings somebody over to their side. Well, I got to tell you, it worked with not necessarily the proselytizing, but the forced conversions worked really well in Southeast Asia. <laughs> well, hmm, okay. And I wonder yeah. how much that influences the current people who didn't convert over looking right. at that going, hmm. Well, actually, forget that statement. Okay. Because the Hindu to mm -hmm. Buddhism, to Islam, that seems to have gone back and forth over history. Again, right. in in this in the Eastern Asia, it has gone up and down. What are we supposed to believe now? Whatever the current ruling class says we have to believe. Right. Which is the way that it happened also in, in England as they changed from Catholicism to Protestantism to whatever. Yep. It is an interesting mix bag of what history brings with religion. So just on a quick side note. Yes. Um, did you see the monk at the Apple store the other day? I did see the monk with the saffron robes and the pink t-shirt. What the hell's up with the pink t-shirt, buddy? <laughs> real, real, and, and, the, and the AirPods. Um, right, hmm. right. Well, I'm hmm. assuming he was there to buy his new iPhone. <laughs> so. I would imagine. Here's the thing, man. It's America. That could just be you know, affecting the look of a monk. Maybe that's the new fashion thing coming out next year. I have Maybe. no idea. Saffron robes. No earthly idea. You would look idea. good in saffron, by oh, the way. Oh, would I? Oh, yeah. thank you. Thank you very much. So, hmm, okay. Well, it's proselytizing. It really bugs me, honey. So at the risk of offending our listeners, although the easily offended probably aren't listening anymore, is the need to convert people from one religion to another something you embrace about the first world? Does it embarrass you about Western civilization? Or is it so bad it makes you want to escape back to a developing nation? Not even just a developing nation. Anywhere? Anywhere. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I, it, we very well may have just missed it. It may have been somebody on the corner shouting in True. in some you know, Slavic language we didn't recognize, but they were basically saying, I'm here to save your soul. Right. Flat out embarrassed. It, so, is, it is definitely something that embarrasses me. So I totally get that in the history of how Western civilization dominated the world, mm -hmm. it was largely under the guise of proselytizing. Right. Okay, reality- we were looking for gold. We were looking for land. We were looking for lots of problems, but right. we wrapped that up. We couched it in the idea of let's bring this true belief set right. to other people. Let's force our belief set onto other people. We're still doing that some 500 years after the major colonization period right. has ended. And that's maddening. It doesn't seem to be evenly distributed, but I could be wrong. There could be proselytizing happening right now in Thailand. Different sects of Buddhism may be trying to right. say, no, believe it this way versus the other. Who knows? It's so pervasive. But what I do know is, from my perspective, they're not on the streets with bullhorns saying, you're all going to die from some supernatural reason if, in fact, you do not adjust your belief set to the right. way that we believe things actually take place. It would be awesome if that were turned around towards scientific way of thinking, but we don't do that because no. we science fans and skeptics don't really proselytize. Maybe we should get the bullhorn. 
<laughs> chemistry today. If you don't know about chemistry, you will die and you don't want to die without knowing chemistry. I'm totally with you. This makes perfect sense. <laughs> so are we going out to buy a bullhorn today? Right after this, honey. Hey, before we go buy that bullhorn, though, I need to do a wrap up and say thank you very much to our newest patrons. We have a new patron. Yay! And I said plural, but I meant singular. Hey, Austin, thank you very much. I It looks like you found your way to our show from the Bangkok podcast. So awesome. Thank you very much for your support, Austin. And also a huge thanks to our longtime supporter and friend, Kelly. She likes almost every single post we put up, even on Patreon. And she sends us really funny postcards oftentimes. She's just so great. She's a really wonderful, wonderful person. So if you, listener, want me to say nice things about you on a future episode, visit shivo.wtf slash patrons and join Kelly and Austin and a few more kind folks who show their love for us with a small contribution each month. Some patrons are eligible for special gifts. Early access via a private feed, exclusive and uncensored episodes no one else will hear, handwritten postcards, and even care packages we pick out just for our biggest fans. We've got lots of things in the works, so visit shivo.wtf slash patrons today. And don't forget to share that screenshot you took earlier with your own network. Sure, it's a slight amount of proselytizing, I get it, but it's for a good cause, right? And thank you for listening to Shiva vs. the First World. For more episodes and easy ways to listen, just go to shivo.wtf slash podcast. And if you want to engage with us on social media, cool, we're just about everywhere. I'm Sheila D. And I am Evo Terra. We'll be back next week with another adjustment to your first world problems. Cheers! We're going to talk about Light rail. <laughs> Son of a perfect. Bitch. God damn it. This is why we pre record stuff. All right, let me make, okay. make a net a point. Can I just start at we're going to? No, start from the start. Pop. Talk. Oh, I did it all nicely. <clears throat> I know, though. but do it again nicely. God. I know. Arr, I know, arr, I know. I'm arr. sorry. Hey, new person, we're recording live. Don't mess with us. No kidding. Say hi. Thank you. Oh, got hearts too. Yay. Yay. We feel much better. <laughs> <laughs>